Altera della Patria, or Altar of the Fatherland, is a massive marble monument built in the center of Rome to commemorate the formation of a unified Italy under King Victor Emmanuel II. It was commissioned in 1875 after the death of the king and was finished 60 years later in 1935. Giuseppe Sacconi was the architect behind the design and construction of the monument, and he was chosen only after his work restoring the Basilica di Loreto in Marsh and his design for the Expiatory Chapel of Monza. Altera della Patria stands as a national monument for the Italian Republic, has been visited by millions of people from all over the world, and is the focal point of the celebrations every June 4th on Republic Day. First off, we can't even begin to describe the artistic elements and design choices behind the Altera without talking about the history behind the monument. As stated in the intro, the monument was built for the first king of unified Italy, Vittorio Emanuela Maria Alberto Eugenio Ferdinando Tommaso, or Victor Emmanuel II if you want to be brief. Victor Emmanuel II ruled from 1861 to 1878 as king of Italy, but before his rule his acts as the king of Piedmont Sardinia are worthy of looking into. He fought alongside his father, King Charles Albert, in the First Italian War for Independence in 1848 and 1849 against the Austrian Empire. Although it was a strategic victory for Austria, it ultimately gave Italians hope for both independence from Austrian rule as well as unification of the Italian peninsula. His influence in the Crimean War alongside Britain and France proved to be invaluable not only to the causes of his allies, but also to his Italian nation. Following the king's death in 1878, the new Italian Republic wanted construction of a monument to begin, signifying the dawn of a new era for Italians. It started in 1885, was inaugurated June 4, 1911 for the 50th anniversary of Italian unification, and was officially completed in 1935. It was also a setting for fascist dictator Benito Mussolini's parades before and during World War II, and afterwards was re-established in its role as a secular temple for the Italian nation. The monument is in the category of eclectic style structures, which means that it essentially is a combination of many artistic styles. A simpler way of looking at it is the fact that it contains heavy elements of neoclassical style with Vitruvian principles. This essentially boils down to an admiration of ancient Roman structural styles, particularly found in the Roman Forum. Columns, white marble, intricate details that you can really only see when you look up close, and amazing sculptures depicting Roman mythological gods and goddesses are striking to look at and admire. The centerpiece of the monument is, of course, a larger-than-life sculpture of Victor Emmanuel II riding his horse, and on each of the ends of the top of the monument, there stands a statue of the Roman goddess Victoria riding quadrigas, or chariots pulled by four horses. There also are two fountains sculpted into the front left and right quadrants of the monument, called Fontana del Adriatico and Fontana del Torino, respectively. Fontana del Adriatico features the Lion of San Marco, and Fontana del Torino features the Wolf of Rome, as well as the Siren Paranope, symbolizing the city of Naples. The monument is also home to Italy's Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. This unknown soldier was an only child to Maria Barjamis from Gardisca di Sanzo during World War I. This tomb is centered at the top of the main stairs under the statue of the goddess Roma, guarded by two service members of the Italian army with an eternal flame between them. While I personally very much enjoy the look of the monument, the design choices of Altera della Patria have been controversial among local Romans. They think the overall feel and look of the monument is out of place and tacky, with some of them even referring to it as La Torta Nuziata, or the wedding cake, or Machina di Scrivere, the typewriter. The strikingly white marble from Brescia stands out amidst the generally brownish hue of the buildings surrounding it, even if they themselves are also made of marble, they're older and have more wear. The Altera really tied Rome together for me. I loved the way the monument looked, and more importantly, what it stood for. This last picture was from the archway as soon as you made your way inside the monument. These words in Latin are Italiae for Italy, Limina for threshold or entrance, Sacra for sacrifice, 
armis, referring to taking up arms, and restituta for restitution. The message is a powerful one within a powerful monument built for a powerful and prideful people.